Hold on, haven't I already painted this machine once? Aren't you thinking, hold on, I've seen this episode? Well, good news and bad news. The good news is, soon after I'd finished painting this, Paragon Paints got in touch and said, if you like, we'll match the original colour and we'll provide you the paint for free. So that is good news. The bad news is, I'm having to repaint the machine. <laughs> and it takes quite a bit of work, even though it had already been prepared, even though I knew the paint was going to come. I've known for a few weeks, actually. So I've been careful not to get the machine dirty, but it's still a fair bit of work. I'm gonna to have to give it two coats. So I'll give you the Paragon paint story um, in, an ex in another clip in a few minutes. But in the meantime, I've got all this to paint again, twice. But it does look very fine in its original colour. I think it's going to be worth it. Well, I know it's going to be worth it. If not for me, then for, you know, whoever gets the machine next. I just hope they appreciate it, that's all. Whoever that is, because I don't know who that'll be, obviously. You know, I do like a good moan. I think everybody likes a good moan from time to time. So my moan is, the shop vac has blown up. We'd only had it 30 years, would you believe it? We actually only used it for about seven or eight years in the house. So it's been in the workshop all that time and uh, anyway, you know, we got the sparks and the sparks, sparks and the smell. Uh, I took it to bits in, you know, hope that I could fix it. Maybe it was a stuck brush or something like that. But of course it wasn't. One of the windings is gone. And the other thing to moan about, I hope you're enjoying this moan, <laughs> is the camera that I'm using right now, which I absolutely love, unfortunately has developed a fault. And it's my own, my own fault, no pun intended, because I'd been using the wrong type of tripod adapter at the base and it was causing the base to bend up and it's done some damage inside. Now I've had it to pieces and it was intermittent to start with and the fault was that it's a touch screen and the touch screen was intermittent and also when I flip it over, so I'm, I flipped it over now, the image should invert but it's not so I'm watching myself upside down now which is quite difficult. But the other thing is because the touch screen isn't working, unfortunately I can't change any settings, I can't review this video. So I'm just gonna trust that it's okay. So I poked about inside and uh, I found a bit, one or two bits that if I pressed, it worked again. But unfortunately, um, well I bought another cable, one of those flat printed cables that goes from the main board to the touch screen and it was a devil of a job to fit but it hasn't fixed it and I've had a look at what it would cost for Sony to fix it and it's it's very expensive so in fact I bought another and it does seem uh, annoying I've only had it about three and a half years but I use it about five times a week so I just went ahead I can't be without it I went ahead and uh, I've bought another. Anyway, that's the end of that moan. Let's get on with the painting. Just some of the other parts drying off. Well, that's coat one done. Took me about three hours in total, I suppose, for this and the other parts as well. When you first put it on, it looks very blue, but as it dries, it goes more gray. So it's one of those colours you can't quite tell which it is. It depends very much on the light. This is still the other grey, the previous grey. So I'll take this into the house and paint it. It's just a bit more convenient in there. I think it looks smart though. Hmm. Second coat. It's quite a lot of work, this. 
there's been quite a gap between first painting and second painting and uh, you forget how much work is involved I think it's a little bit like having children you know if you could remember what it was like you probably wouldn't have any more did I really say that I'm not sure I was serious the new camera is on its way apparently I didn't realise, but I bought it from Holland. So if you're not familiar with the uh, geography around here, the significance there is I've bought it from Europe rather than buying it from the UK. Now I didn't even realise when I placed the order, it was a .co.uk website. So we'll see if that brings in any complications. I'm not yet sure what I'm going to do with this camera, the one that we're using right now. I've stripped it down three times so far. Each time I've just taken it a little bit further because it's an expensive item as you can imagine. So I didn't want to break it. And I think I said that I'd replace the cable that runs between the display and the main circuit board, which is in the base. And it wasn't that. Now I thought it might have been that simply because I was touching that cable and it was working and then it wasn't working and so on. Anyway, replacing the cable didn't fix it. I'm pretty sure it's not the display. And I think probably using that incorrect tripod fitting has distorted the base and possibly cracked the circuit board that's in the base or it's caused a short or something. Anyway, what I'm thinking of doing is making another video, stripping that down. I may not be able to fix it, but at least I can share what's involved in taking it all apart. I could only find one video on the web with anybody dismantling that camera, which by the way is a Sony FDR AX43. So maybe that video will come along a bit later. Last face of the last side. And then we're done. Somebody said to me, are you going to paint these letters, you know, front, front face of the letters? Probably not. I quite like them as they are. I'm probably over brushing this. Anybody with expertise is going to tell me that I'm over brushing it. Spent too much time painting houses haven't I? Oh except that's only had one coat this wheel so I've just got a couple of bits in the house. What? Alexa mute. How can this has only had one coat trigger Alexa? Does it sound like Alexa, this has only had one coat. There you go. Alexa, mute. Go away. That's all I've used out of that paint look. So don't be man a litre for any machine. I think with the grey, the light grey, I probably used half of this tin. With this one, probably a quarter. It covers it incredibly well. I probably put a bit less on because it wasn't a base paint, it was just a cover paint this time. Anyway, the next job, I think, is to clean this up, this spark catcher. So it looks homemade to me, workshop made. They've done a good job of it. But this bracket here, I think, is too weak. So I'll put a couple of gussets here. I might put a plate across the back here. So I've scraped off what paint I can, and then it needs to be gone over with a sander. There's a couple of dents here, no doubt where a piece of work flew off the table and smacked into the back. But I'll have to wait for this paint here to dry before I can be doing anything on this, I think. Hold on. I forgot to do this front plate, look. Front plate for the Euler Reservoir. Surprising what you can do with a big brush if you're careful. So this hasn't had any coat before, so this will need another coat as well. I'll take it into the house, I think, for the second coat. 
So what's the story of the paint then? Well I wanted to paint that surface grinder the original colour and I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what that was. But in the event I bought the paint and I was about to shade off. Now as that video went out where I was painting it, Steve from Paragon Paints got in touch and said, well I tell you what, if you can give us a sample, we'll match it and we'll provide the paint for free. And I thought, gosh, you know, the paint's only just dried and it's taken me ages, but it was too good an offer to miss. So I thought, yeah, okay, well, we'll do that. And I went to see Steve and I took with me this plate, which I'll zoom into in a minute and show you. And I scraped a bit off that plate, which I'd repainted already by then to find the original color again. And they matched it. Now I'll show you in a moment all the things they've sent me because it was more than just the paint. But anyway, to continue the story, so, you know, emails backwards and forward. Yes, we've managed to match it. What do you think? Yes, I like it. That's great. Thank you very much. Good. We'll send it. So he said it's on its way. Well, it got to about nine days and because they were giving it to me for free, I didn't want to nag them, did I? but it didn't arrive so i messaged him and said uh you know when should i expect it not trying not to be too pushy of course and he said oh you should have had it days and days ago let me check well okay so what's happened well he tracked it down with the courier which is dpd one of the better couriers actually in this country and the van that was carrying the parcel had had a crash and the parcel got pretty much destroyed and the paint was leaking out so DPD put the consignment into um, quarantine because they didn't really know what was in it right but they didn't tell anybody so Steve's ringing round he finds out this package is in quarantine and with the paint is also my plate coming back in return my uh, contact to plate cover um, which is a lot worth a lot more than the paint Anyway, he, he says to DPD, will you please send it on back to the factory? And they were like, oh, well, you know, we'd rather just throw it away, actually. And he's like, no, you can't because it's my customer's plate. You can't do that. So they got it back. And when they got the consignment back, all they really got was a load of plastic bags full of paint. So they had to start again. So it cost them a lot of time and effort, much more than it was going to take me to repaint the machine. So, in due course, as they say, well, they were, they were more careful the second time because they sent the paint in one consignment. Um, separately, they sent me a paint matching chart, which I'll show you, and the plate came back in another consignment, every one tracked separately. So, good on them, but it was a lot more work than they expected. Now, the paint that they've matched is now on sale on their website, so let me zoom in and show you, but you won't see my head because I can't get my head on and the paint as well. You'll have to do without my head, okay? When it arrived, then I got this big box and this chart separately. And this is the color that they've matched up for my uh, Herbert Junior surface grinder. And on here they've called it Herbert Junior Gray Gloss and their code is W235947 and in addition they also sent me I'll find the right the tins all look similar but they you've got to read the writing uh, brushing grey primer which I've used for the uh, spark catch box and brushing red primer now I think somewhere in this video I say uh, red oxide but it isn't it's just called brushing red primer and then a tin of thinners I think yes thinners and then no that's not thinners this is thinners this is thinners All right this is brushing additive and then in addition a can of spray of the new color which I'm going to be using a bit later so that's all of it so that's extremely uh, generous of them. Now, one thing to sort of throw in a kind of anecdotal story. If you've bought paints to match your machine, 
Well, how well it actually matches, and I think many do, but how well they actually match depend a bit on how the original colour was. And Steve was telling me that in one case he was talking to a fitter who worked in the factory uh, on Boxfords, Boxford lathes and other machines. And he was saying that the painters would generally work with whatever they'd got. So they'd have something that was the approximate colour, but if they didn't have exactly the right colour, they'd get the next best. And then they would have a like a big tub of paint, which they would use for that week. And then when it ran out, they would tip the remainder of what was left from last week into this week's paint. Just remembered there was something else he told me, and that is, um, of course, the old paints are lead-based paints, or they have lead in them. And you'd think it would be simple enough to just, with pigments, mix up any colour you like. But the pigments, I think, I'm not an expert, but I believe the pigments are different now. So it can be very difficult to match the old lead paint shades. So, you know, there's a complexity in the work that you wouldn't think of. This colour chart is available on the Paragon website. Now, you have to pay for it if you want one. They're about £8, I think about ten dollars us now the reason that they charge you for these is because they're expensive to produce because these patches are all real paint so if you match to one of these that's absolutely the color that you'll get so you can see bs 4800 ral which i presume is ral classic because there's more than one ral color scheme and then bs 381c I'm guessing after about 1949 because I think it was rejigged and we can see right down here the colour I got which was Dark Admiralty Grey and these names have lovely kind of military tones to them, uh, Light Admiralty Grey, uh, Aircraft Grey and so on, you get the idea. So many of the old British machine colours are likely to be in here, BS381C, unless they were bespoke for that particular manufacturer. Well, I think that's a pretty good promo for Paragon Paints. Um, they gave me the colour completely unconditionally and I asked them, do you want to see what I'm going to say? And they said, no, just, just say whatever you think. We don't need to see anything. Um, I was only expecting one tin of paint. I never expected all this stuff to come as well. Now, they do get something from it because they can sell that Herbert matching colour on their website, but they're not going to sell thousands and thousands, are they? And actually for me, I'm very pleased to support a British company because it's hard to find any British companies to support, to be honest with you. And I know you all get mad at me um, if I somehow promote companies from places in Asia. We won't mention any names, will we? So, yeah, I think they deserve it, actually. So I'm just going to put a few bits back onto the machine, the motor and a few of the bits back to get it back to where it was. And I'll show you the finished painted machine um, and you can see what you think. I'm just waiting for the second coat of paint to dry on that contactor cover plate then that can go on. I like the previous grey but I prefer the original colour. You can see I've put the work light on now. Well thanks to Paragon and thank you for watching.